Hello, this is Mr. Coates, and this is Apes Lecture number 32, Energy, Waste, and Efficiency. One of the things, especially here in the United States, we have to realize that the, one of the best ways to conserve energy is to become more efficient and stop wasting it. We waste a lot of energy here in the United States, and we're going to see how much. For example, let's, let's look at this down here. This is a roof of the, the city building in downtown Chicago. And they have all this uh, cooling equipment up here, so they use a lot of energy in this building. But what they've done is that they've decided to try and become more efficient. So they've actually taken some of their vacant roof areas here, and they've planted it with plants. And these planted areas actually help the building become more efficient. They actually block some of the sun rays and keep the building from absorbing direct sunlight. It can provide food for the people who work there. And the other thing is, is that can uh, filter water as it rains down on top of the city. And so any of the water coming off of these plots would be filtered clean. So this makes this building a lot more efficient because of the, the added garden. So energy efficiency really important for reducing emissions, reducing our uh, ultimate uh, use of electricity, increase our efficiency. This way we don't have to deal with those countries who don't like us. They stop in de environmental degradation for that. Obviously, everybody wants to save money, so that's a good way. And then also, a lot of this energy efficiency stuff creates a lot of jobs. So energy efficiency is a really good thing. The problem is, is that a lot of the power companies don't want to promote it because then they're not going to be making the money. So what we really need to do as a public is that we need to make our voice heard and start getting on these power companies to start getting in the efficiency business. Instead of just producing power, they need to become more efficient themselves. And I think if and got into the efficiency business, then they wouldn't be so against it. All right, so let's look at wasted energy. 84% of all commercial energy in the United States is wasted. This is unbelievable. It's huge, 84%. I mean, that's like taking 84% of the money that we put into commercial use here in the United States and just flushing it down the drain. Uh, that is a lot of waste. And uh, unfortunately, it's uh, unavoidable for some of it um, because it's a degradation through power lines. Remember the second law of thermodynamics. But uh, also, the other stuff is unnecessary. It's inefficiencies that aren't needed. It's uh, people who just leave lights on, buildings that have lights on, cars that are left running. It's just, just different types of waste out there. And there's a lot of different wastes, and everybody's responsible for it. Let's look at our cars, for example. We're down here. This is terrible. This is how many gallons that we get as that we've been getting throughout the years. And you would think that as technology got better, we would be getting a little bit more efficient in our cars here in the United States. So our cars are stuck down here with an average fuel efficiency of around, I don't know, 23, 24 miles per gallon. We go up here to Europe and Japan, and oh my gosh, they are killing us here on energy efficiency when it comes to automobiles. And part of the reason is the size of cars. Europe has much smaller cars than we do here in the United States. We love our SUVs and we love our big monster trucks and whatever else we like to drive. It's huge. But those are gas hogs and our fuel efficiency goes way down because of all of those. If we go to Europe, you see a lot more smaller cars. You don't see these huge cars. And that's one reason. But also, they're just using more fuel efficient motors over there than we do here too. And uh, we need to really get on board. We need to. I mean, we're a wealthy country in the in the world, and we can't outdo Europe. But once again, our government subsidizes our auto making uh, industry, and they do this on purpose. And um, unfortunately, it's only hurting us in the long run. Let's look at nuclear power plant. How ineffective it is. Okay, if we look at all the waste energy, starting with the uranium mining and the processing, and then uh, going to the the power plant and then transmission the electric and then the resistance in the electric lines at the end we get 14 percent usable energy out in nuclear and this was supposed to be our savior here in the united states of our energy crisis we were supposed to really glom onto nuclear and really use it and this is but it's only 14 percent efficient once again wasted a huge amount of not only energy but money too the amount of money that goes into all this stuff and you only get 14 percent this is a better option once again europe is really killing us on this this is passive solar and if we could build buildings that use solar energy to heat we get 90 percent of efficiency if they're built right here's some other energy efficiencies um Dry cell batteries, pretty efficient, okay? So those A, double A's, those things you put in your battery are pretty good. Okay, let's go down here to um, 
diesel engine. Diesel is more efficient than gasoline. Even though diesel fuel is more expensive, it's actually better to have a diesel burning vehicle when it comes to fuel efficiencies. And this is one reason why uh, back in the 80s there was a huge diesel push in the United States and uh, actually outpaced the selling of gasoline cars for quite a long time. Now if we get down to the automobile, we've already seen this before, about 25% energy efficient. So that means 75% of that money you're pouring into your tank goes to waste. Fluorescent lamps, um, those big ones we have in the classroom, 22% energy efficient. Incandescent lamp is 4% energy efficient. So we're losing 95% of the energy we put in that incandescent bulb. Um, and so now we're going to compact fluorescents instead, which are a little bit better. All right, so what are some ways to improve energy efficient in transportation? Once again, raise our automobile standards here in the United States. The government has really been slow to act because the automobile lobby doesn't want to have to do this to their cars because it makes their cars more expensive. They have to do some R&D, and it can be done. We can make our cars really, really fuel efficient here in the United States. We just don't do it because uh, the government subsidizes our car industry. Uh, so we need to get these CAFE standards. This is the Corporate Automobile Fuel Efficiency Standards. And we need to get those up higher. And unfortunately, our government's just not doing it. Thankfully, we've got some hybrids going on now with the Prius. The Prius is driving some other hybrids out there. We've got the Volt and we've got some others out there that are really good. And so hopefully this trend will continue and we'll keep on having more and more hybrids. I'm still waiting on my hybrid pickup truck, though. I, I, I can't seem to live without a pickup truck. And uh, it'd be great if uh, somebody out there could come up with a hybrid pickup truck. I'd really like that. Um, the other thing we could do is that we could start looking at hydrogen fuel cells. I talked about hydrogen earlier, and if we could figure out a way to capture hydrogen and then turn it into a usable fuel in uh, transportation, this would be great. Because once again, the only exhaust would be water. And instead of uh, having all those nasty fumes when you're driving around all the time, some of the other best ideas here, if you live close to where you work or go to school, ride a bike. And then I always say trains are the answer. You go to Europe, you can get to anywhere on a train very efficiently. Trains can transport so many more people per gallon of fuel than a car can, even a hybrid car. Trains are the way to go. They're the most efficient way to move people. And unfortunately, the United States just hasn't got on the train thing. In fact, the automobile industry back in the 1950s killed our electric train system here in the United States. They actually got together with some other companies and bought out our train companies and dismantled all of our train systems for people moving back in the 40s and 50s. It's a shame because this was the best, this is actually the best way to get around efficiently and you can't do that in the United States right now. Let's look at this picture up here. This is an infrared picture of some buildings. These buildings show the whitest here is where the heat is being lost. So if we look, all the heat is being lost in windows. And we talked about energy efficiency with windows when we did uh, some calculations in class. And windows are the least efficient uh, of all the uh, building materials that we have here in the States. And, and if we can make these double paned, we would be losing a lot less energy out of them. If you add insulation to your house, you can caulk things. When you caulk things, that prevents air from moving in and out. Wrap your water heater in a water heater blanket. Those are really cheap. Um, and it saves quite a lot of money. If you have the money, you could do a tankless water heater. This way you don't have to keep on heating the same water over and over again. You only heat the water once. And then buy those Energy Star appliances. Other things we could do is that we could build more energy efficient houses starting from the ground up. So one way to do this is to do super insulated houses. So before you even start building, you come up with a plan of how you're going to actually insulate everything. And they have all kinds of neat ways to insulate houses nowadays. You get that spray foam, which is really efficient. They make insulation pads now made out of ground up blue jeans, and those are very efficient as well. You can make uh, all kinds of weird houses too, straw bales. Straw bales have a lot of air space in them, and if the house is built right with straw bales, it's a very good insulator. People are using tires now. Tires also have a large airspace in them that can be an insulator. I've seen people make the inside of the walls with uh, aluminum cans. And so anytime you can get air spaces in those walls that don't allow airflow through, they can be very good insulators. All these things can be done to really improve the efficiency of the house. Another way we can save energy is what we call through cogeneration. This is when we take some waste heat. So let's say there's a, a engine that's burning all kinds of uh, fuel and it puts out a lot of heat. So we could recover that heat and use it to turn some kind of liquid into a gas. And then this gas could turn a turbine 
or it could do a heat exchanger to hot water and you could possibly produce some electricity. And so this is called cogeneration because we're using two useful forms of energy from one source. Basically, this really doubles our efficiency when it comes here. So if we could do that, uh, that'd be very helpful. They do this a lot in big cities. A lot of steam's produced, and so they use this steam throughout the whole city to run things. And uh, so they use a lot of cogeneration in big cities and some big factories as well. But you really don't see this in our homes at all. And so we could get much more efficient in our homes if we figured out ways for cogeneration. Recycling. A lot of people don't think about it, but recycling can be a huge energy saver. Look at this chart. This chart shows you how many millions of BTUs can be uh, saved by recycling a ton of this material. So let's see, if we recycle our textbooks, 0.7 million BTUs, not a whole lot there, but you never know. Steel cans, 20.5. These are all plastics here, so plastics can save a lot of energy if we recycle those. Copper, very good. Carpet, who thought carpet would be good to be recycled? But you can recycle carpet. In fact, you can buy new carpets made out of recycled carpets. You can buy plastic water bottles made out of carpets. You can buy carpets made out of plastic water bottles. So these things are very good. And then the best one here, aluminum cans. Do you know how many aluminum cans we throw away on campus every year? If we recycled those, we could save a lot of energy worldwide. And so recycling is not just good about saving the material, it's also good for energy uh, savings. I encourage you, when you can, recycle everything. My recycling bin at home is always much more full than my trash bin. So we have a really good system here in Hillsborough County to recycle, and I encourage you to use it to the fullest extent. Another thing we can do is that we can update the power grid. Our power grid is very old and inefficient. It runs on copper and aluminum wire. It takes a lot of energy just to push the electrons through that wire. A lot of our wires go for miles and miles and miles. So this is not good energy use. If we convert those energy signals into digital, we could save billions every year. I'm not sure exactly how this works. Um, China is going to uh, really uh, be in the forefront of this in the future. They are updating their grid to be more efficient using this digital system, and uh, they're learning from our mistakes. And If we don't get in the game here, they're going to far surpass us when it comes to energy efficiency. And that could be bad uh, for national security even. Another thing we could do is we could decentralize the grid. In the United States, we have these huge power grids that run off major power plants. If we decentralize that, so we have smaller power generation, like a small wind farm, we have small hydrogen power cells here, small solar arrays, so all these small ones can then feed back into the main grid. So you have all different ones, and then maybe you have some kind of bioenergy power plants here, some larger solar plants, some larger wind farms that fall in, and so we get rid of those major uh, power plants that take up a lot of space, put out a lot of pollution, and so we don't have to use these. And then this power can all be harnessed then to go into industry and also for homes and commercial. And so if we decentralize the grid, it would be much more efficient because you're not so far away from the power generating facility. How can you be more sustainable in the future? Uh, we definitely need to get those vehicles more fuel efficient. Definitely give tax credit to those people who work on efficiency. We need to have incentives so they can do that. We need to increase our energy research. Remember, this is one of the things that President Reagan got rid of. And he, uh, I, don't, I don't understand why any president would do this. Efficiency is the key here to saving, solving some of our energy crisis. And why you would want to get rid of the research on energy efficiency, I have no idea. Provide subsidies for those renewable energy folks instead of the non-renewable. We provide all of our subsidies mostly to this non-renewable group and uh, this does not promote the use of renewable energy. And one of the ways you can do this is that you can vote. By voting for the right politicians that back the right types of energy efficiency, energy plans, that's the way to go. And if all Americans could get on board and vote those politicians out that don't see energy efficiency as being a huge issue, but voting is the way it's going to happen. And it's going to happen with you guys when you guys get old enough to vote. This is where you can make a difference. Other things you can do, once again, real easy, turn off the lights, wash your clothes in hot and cold water, turn your thermostat up a degree during the summer and turn it down a degree in the winter. Use compact fluorescence. Most people are doing that now because we phased out incandescence, so that's good. And ride a bike, you know, walk. Use less packaging. So when you buy something, buy based on the packaging. If it has a lot of packaging, there's a lot of energy that went into that product. So buy products that have less packaging. Buy those things that are energy efficient. 
buy use those contractors that use energy efficient means and energy efficient materials in their construction vote with the money once we start voting with the money then everything else will fall in place because this country runs on the dollar we need to make smart decisions as consumers and hopefully when we start doing that the government will start making smarter decisions well i'm going to get off my soapbox i hope you learned something about energy efficiency and i hope this will help you save some energy in the future